welcome. Welcome back to another Peak District adventure. So, I'm currently on the Cookgate path, having parked the car at Langset, I managed to get a space, it's a very popular area, the benefits of an early start. I've made my way across Mickledon Edge, now on the Cookgate path, um, and the next, or the first destination for today is Marjorie Hill. What I'm planning to do today though is use this walk to scope out a few potential wild camping spots. It's a very remote and lonely part of the Peak District is this. So before I commit to camping here, I'm going to look at a few uh, potential options, suss them out and see whether they're suitable for me given my distinct lack of experience when it comes to wild camping. So this is a beautiful walk. I lasted it about a year ago. But it was very misty, so I could see absolutely nothing. It's a much clearer day today, so I'm looking forward to, to this one. Okay, I'll catch up with you further down the walk. Let's see what today brings. So this walk I'm doing today, I did it, I think it's about July last year, in much mistier conditions. Um, and it was the first video I filmed for YouTube. The video is not on the channel anymore though. Um, I filmed it on a phone with no wind protection. And even though there was barely a breath of wind, the video was still ruined by the, uh, <laughs> the wind noise. Uh, that day I walked all the way down to Howden Dam and then came back. I'm doing a slightly different route today. It's a lot less remote and quiet uh, this time though. I've already been past what looked like a trail running race and several mountain bikers. <laughs> We've gone off piste now. Peat bog hopping. Just made it there to uh, Marjorie Hill Trick Point. So you know the score. Touching the trig is mandatory. We'll go and see if we can find Marjorie Stone, shall we? Which is just over the way there. So we've made it to Marjorie Stones here. Some great views from here, but before I show you those, I think. This is a perfect spot for a quick cup of tea before we uh, make our way over to the next place. We have some fantastic views here from Marjorie Stones. You've got Lowes Hill, Mamtor there, the mass of the northern edge of Kinder, and over that way is Bleaklow. Just see Home Moss communication tower over there. Obviously, Black Hill is just to the side of that. So I'm off of the Peat Moorland now, back on the Cut Gate path, and I'm going to follow this down to Slippery Stones. And then I've got a sharp climb back up and I'll, uh, I'll kind of loop round on myself. I've just passed a, uh, I think they were a group of um, D of E students who are doing a bit of map reading training on the moors up there. <laughs> Good luck to them. So I've just descended down Cranberry Clough there, uh, dodging several psychos on mountain bikes <laughs> along the way. <laughs> um, Slippery Stones is over in that direction. 
uh, and obviously that path takes you down to Harden Reservoir and obviously further beyond that Lady Bower. Um, but I'm going to make my way up uh, Swineside here now and that'll take me up to Broadhead Clough and then I can obviously get myself back up onto the moors again. It's a tough climb up from what I remember the last time I did this one. So I'm about halfway up Broadhead Clough. It's a lot steeper than it looks on camera, trust me. <laughs> Got horse stone days over in that direction. Hopefully when I get to the top there, I should have sight of uh, crow stones, which will be my uh, second pit stop of the day. I'm just hoping that uh, those clouds that are coming in haven't got some rain with them. So I've made it to the top of the very steep Broadhead Clough. Worth it for the views though, of Howden Reservoir over there. And I can just see crow stones in the distance there, so uh, we'll follow this uh, kind of a path up there and we'll have a pit stop, shall we? You certainly have to go off piste again here to get over to where we need to go, but this is a path of sorts. <laughs> so this is a, another plane wreckage site over here in the Peak District. So this one is a console plane that uh, came down in, um, in 1951. Unfortunately, uh, three people tragically lost their lives again. They would have obviously been in low cloud See straight into the uh, the banks here uh, say thank you to andy beavers for uh, sharing this location with me i came for a walk with him a, a few weeks ago uh, over to the crowstones and uh, he brought me to this site to, see, to pay my respects see a lot more remote than the uh, the bleaklow crash site that uh, a lot of people go to in the peak district so the Crowstones is, uh, is uh, just over the, uh, the hill here, so uh, I'll see you up there. So welcome to Crowstones, and possibly my favourite view, view spot in the Peak District, with Howden Reservoir there, Wynn Hill just behind it. So you've got uh, Lowe's Hill popping up there, the mass of Kinder. Just beneath that is Ronksley Moor. And then we make our way over to Bleaklow there with the uh, Grinner Stones and Bleaklow Stones pretty much straight ahead. What a fantastic lunch stop view this is. Beautiful. As I mentioned, that's Rogsley Moor over there. Uh, there's a, a beautiful little boffy over in those moors. I'll put a link to the video. I did a video last year where I went to that boffy. Not the easiest to get to, but well worth checking out. So over there we have the Rocking Stone, named as such because if you stand on top of it, it does actually rock. Um, I won't be demonstrating that for you today though, you'll have to take my word for it. <laughs> um, you can see the home moss transmitter over on Black Hill again over there. I absolutely love it up here though. This is the, the new place I come to when I want a little bit of solitude for an hour or so. On a day like today where it's pleasant temperatures, not much wind, fantastic place to stop and have some lunch. I'll just show you those views again back down towards Howden. Beautiful. It's an impressive kind of grit stone rock formations here. Beautiful. So now I'm going to make my way over to the outer edge trig point um, and then we'll follow the Cutgate path back towards uh, Langsam. I could stay here all day though. <laughs> Gorgeous.
So I've gone off piste a bit here. The actual mark path is over in that direction. There is a path of sorts up to the trig point. I've got the walking poles out though, because uh, although it's been dry for a couple of weeks, you have to be careful what you're standing on on this, this part. You could disappear up to the waist in a bog if you're not careful. <laughs> So I've made it here to Outer Edge. Do you know the score? So I think this must be one of the more remote Peak District trick points. Well, well and truly in the middle of moorland here. So there's a couple of paths that we can take back. I say we, that's me and the camera I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, I'm going to follow that path there, which is uh, directly over the moorland and it brings me nearer to the top of the path uh, that I took back to Lang that I'll take back to Langset. I imagine in bad weather conditions this could be quite a tricky uh, task to navigate but uh, on a day like today it should be a doddle. Touch wood. <laughs> So I imagine this path in the middle of a wet winter could be an absolute nightmare and you're up to your knees in mud but after a couple of weeks of dry weather in the summer it's absolutely fantastic nice and soft and springy underfoot I think it's definitely the best time of year to be walking this <laughs> I think this is where technology in terms of navigation such as view ranger is fantastic and complements a map and compass it's quite comforting to know that you could just kind of double check that you're on the right path <laughs> when you're just in the middle of open moorland with no kind of features or landmarks to uh, to help guide you i am on the right path though thankfully <laughs> So, uh, I've descended down the path from Outer Edge, just crossed over uh, Mickledon Edge there and I've decided to extend the walk slightly. I'm just walking up to Mid Hope Moors now. It's a point called Lost Lad, not to be confused with the Lost Lad over on uh, Derwent Edge. I wonder if the story is something similar. I'll have to check that out when I get back home. So I'll follow this path and um, this will bring me out to the other side of the reservoir so I can walk round it and then uh, back to the car. Almost back where we started now. The reservoir's come into view there. I'm assuming that there is a shooter's cabin Probably not one that's open unfortunately. There are grass moors around here so I'm assuming that's what that is. So I'm going to do the closing comments from here. Down there is the path alongside the reservoir and it will be busy so I probably won't have chance to uh, um, do much, uh, much speaking along there. If I take any interesting kind of footage as I'm walking by, you'll be seeing that appearing on screen as I'm wafting along here. One thing I did want to mention though, uh, was that all being well, if I can sort the logistics out, a week or so after this video goes live, I'm um, hoping to walk the Cotswold Way which is a, uh, a trail obviously through the Cotswolds just over a hundred miles long something I want to do in the build up to my Pennine Way challenge so it will all be dependent on being able to sort accommodation out etc um, my wife has also got the same time as me off work so uh, uh, 
she is hoping to come along. Um, I have badged it as a holiday, but uh, yeah, I'm not sure it will be a holiday for her. She may have to do a bit of a, a taxi service job to pick me up from some of the uh, um, the endpoints at, uh, at each day. So yeah, watch this space for that one. If I do do that, I don't think I'll do the videos real time like I did when I walked the Cleveland Way. It'll probably be something that I'll, I'll capture all the footage and then put the put the videos together when I get back home from it. But never say never. We'll, we'll see how things pan out there. Right, okay, thanks for watching this one. Fantastic walk. There'll definitely be a link to the route map here. Highly recommend this one. Some brilliant uh, areas I've passed today. If you like solitude and remote walking, this is a good walk for you. Okay, enough waffling. I'll catch up with you all on the next video, when that may be. Bye for now.